Hey everybody, Sarah here. So today we're going to be doing the sort of history and explanation of the buff mutation. If you like corn snakes and corn snake content, this is the channel to subscribe to. So I would really love if you would smash the subscribe button. Just slither on up to that thing and just, you know, just once. Just, just once, because if you do it more than once, then you unsubscribe, and that doesn't make sense. Also, I want to thank all of the members on this channel. You guys make this channel what it is, and I appreciate you guys so much. I'm going to list you over here because I don't have the list in front of me, uh, but thank you all so much for being here. Anybody who would like to become a member, it's $2 a month, and it gets you your own video each week, as well as access to live videos after they're over. If you can't financially contribute to the channel, that's perfectly fine. Liking and or commenting also really helps, so thank you guys so much. Anybody who's already subscribed, anybody who already liked or already commented uh whatever you guys are awesome thank you so much for being here i just want to take a quick moment to thank reptilinks who help support this channel as well uh you can use my code at reptilinks.com uh, it's also in the description it gets you five dollars off and i also get a percentage so it really helps the channel uh, all of the money by the way from that goes back into the channel all the money from all of this goes back into the channel. So uh, any money that I get from Reptilinks goes back into the channel. Any money that I get from the members goes back to the channel. Any mum, any uh, super thanks that I get, that money goes back into the channel. Uh, literally anything that I ever get as far as money goes um, from this channel goes back to the channel and helps me make better videos for you guys. So thank you all for uh, helping me with making this channel what it is. I greatly, greatly appreciate it. Now we're gonna jump in with this history of buff. Also remember on my website, sariusnakeshop.com, I have two corn snake morph books that go over the selectively bred traits and the base mutations. They're ebooks if you would like to learn more about corn snake morphs. I have the majority of the information that's in my head in those books, so uh, please check those out. So buff is kind of an interesting mutation. We have two or three kind of mutations that are very similar. We have buff, toffee, and yellow jacket. They all originated in caramel mutations. I just want to mention that right now. Uh, caramel originated with Rich Zikowski. I did a video on caramel. I'll link that above for you guys if you'd like to go watch it. Today we're going to be talking about buff, which was the first to be proven out of these three sort of weird caramel-esque looking mutations. So the original buff was actually found in Holland by someone named Jan Knott. I hope that I'm saying that correctly. If not, my apologies. I am not good with names. In 2001, Jan bred a classic to an amelanistic and got, surprisingly, three different phenotypes. Classics, amels, and a very, like, brown-looking snake, which we now know to be buff. So this breeding was repeated a few years later and actually the first orange, which is the combination of amelanistic and buff, was also produced out of that clutch. Not knowing for sure if this was something new or just something that might be running in uh, his lines, he got a snake from Rijkowski, a lavender, and it turns out that this was actually a mutation that passed on. Uh, getting an unrelated snake and breeding it into the line proved that this was something just new and different. And also I want to apologize in advance if I mix up the he and she in this. I mean he, Jan is a guy, but every time I see the name Jan, I only I think of it as a female name, so I'm apologizing in advance. So after learning that this was actually a different mutation, uh, Jan made sure to send some of them off to a friend who would also be putting it into their breeding trial. And now we have buff corn snakes everywhere. Of the three, buff, toffee, and yellow jacket, buff is probably the most common and is especially the most common in the U.S. and especially the most common in the U.S. that's actually been proven to be a mutation. Now you might be wondering, uh, how do we know if buff, toffee, and or yellow jacket are the same or different? And the answer is we don't exactly know. I plan to do a history of toffee video and an explanation of yellow jacket video, but I'm not going to do that here. We're strictly talking about buff. Now, people who breed toffee and or buff will swear that they are different mutations and that it's relatively obvious even visually. I know that a lot of people who are not into corn snakes sometimes don't see the like differences between things that are obvious to breeders who have been doing it a long time, especially if you hold up two hypotypes next to each other um, or even two like slightly different normal types. Uh, you may not understand why something is an okatee versus not an okatee. You may not understand why something is an ultra and not a lava. Uh, these kind of subtle things are what breeders kind of do for a living. And so if you don't see the difference, that's perfectly fine. I totally understand. And that's kind of how I feel about buff and toffee. It is difficult for me to see the differences between them. However, I will explain it to you in the way that it's been explained to me. 
People who breed toffee say that toffee is a little bit more dark and has less contrast between the saddle and ground color usually. The toffee color reminds me a lot more of like the Kisachi rat snake color. They are not related at all, but when we're talking about color comparison, uh, that, that kind of reminds me a lot more of that, that sort of dark brown, almost chocolatey colored, well, dark toffee colored snake is what we refer to as toffee. That's the name. Buff breeders will say more that their snakes are brighter in color. There is a higher contrast between the uh, ground color and the saddle color. And buff is much more easy to mistake for some caramel than the toffee is. Toffee, in my opinion at least, uh, looks more distinct from everything else than buff, where buff almost looks like it could just be a caramel. In that regard, to me, buff looks more similar to something like a root beer corn snake, which is the hybrid between the emeralds rat snake and a corn snake. I know I'm comparing these to hybrid colors. They are not hybrids. Do not come at me in the comments. Do not come at me. I'm not saying that these are hybrids. I'm saying that the color reminds me of the color of these hybrids because in my mind, since I do not breed either buff or toffee, I don't have really much else to compare it to uh, based on what I have seen. And so that's the best way I have to compare it. Because when I see an orange corn snake, I'm not sure if it's orange or creamsicle. That's just the way that I am like thinking of it. And the Auratum corn snake definitely seems a lot more different from just Amel than orange does, in my opinion. But orange is a much brighter color, whereas Auratum, which is the Amel and toffee combination, that's a bit, it's a bit uh, like darker orange. Like it's just something about it that it just has that more like toffee look to it than the buff, obviously. So I will quickly touch on Yellow Jacket, where I think Yellow Jacket is actually something completely different from these other two. Um, and I do think that the other two are different from each other as well. I'm not gonna get too into Yellow Jacket, but Yellow Jacket actually definitely does add yellows. Whereas these other two, I'm not 100% sure that they do. So Buff and Toffee have been mostly labeled as hypoerythristic mutations, which means a reduction of reds. Now I would actually go so far as to say that Toffee is an anerythristic mutation and it just isn't a xanthic. So for those of you who don't know, erythrian, I think I'm saying that right, is the red pigment. Xanthophore is the yellow pigment and melanin is the black pigment. Those are the three main pigments we're gonna see in corn snakes. So our charcoal and anerythristic type A, we have labeled them as being anerythristic types, but the reality is they're also almost azanthic types because the yellow that's in the ground color uh, and in the saddles also goes away. A normal corn snake has a lot of oranges usually, and that is in the ground color and in the saddle color. Uh, charcoal and anery both remove all of the reds, but also the majority of the yellow as well. And a lot of people say that the yellow that does show up on an anery or charcoal, especially in the cheeks and sides, uh, is acquired through the diet and not even a pigment that would naturally be coming in anyway. I'm not 100% sure of that being true, but that is something that has been tossed around as just a theory. So the concept of an anerythristic corn snake that still has yellow um, is basically caramel. Caramel is anerythristic, but it just still has that xanthophore, it still has that yellow. And so essentially, in my opinion, toffee is the same thing, whereas I think buff actually retains some of the red pigment. I would put caramel and toffee in the anerythristic group, and I would put buff in the hypoerythristic group, which is why I personally think that they are different. Hey guys, this is Sarah in editing. So I was looking at all of the photos of Buff and Toffee and I'm kind of feeling now that like both Buff and Toffee do still, they can retain a little bit more of that orangey red tone. And so I'm not like, like I said, I don't breed Buff or Toffee. And so I was kind of just going by what other people have like relayed to me, people who do breed these mutations. Um, but like kind of take that with a grain of salt as far as like which ones are we going to consider anerythristic versus which ones we're going to consider hyperethristic because it's not like super cut and dry. We don't like 100% know. I just kind of wanted to like mention that because that is kind of a thing that sets uh, buff and toffee apart from caramel. Uh, because if you have a, especially if you add amelanistic to 
any of these mutations. The buff and toffee both look very orange, very creamsicle-ish uh, in their amelanistic forms, but caramel does not. Caramel is strictly just the yellows. So um, I kind of may take back a little bit my personal opinion on um, these two things kind of being more separate. I think that after doing this video and looking over pictures and starting to edit, um, they're much more similar looking than I kind of originally gave them credit for. Uh, and in fact, sometimes I feel like like some of them like are the opposite of what I'm saying. So I say that toffee is more of a dark brown, but yet I'm seeing buffs that are also dark brown. So um, I think that this is a lot more complicated than I can just like straightforward really in a video. And I kind of want to just mention that here. Um, some of these things are just not going to be that straightforward. They're just not. And um, I don't see a lot of people going out of their way to breed buff and toffee so um and like to prove all these things and like actually figure these things out uh so if anybody out there does breed buff and or toffee uh, i would love to hear from you your opinions on this video specifically and also um you know what experiences you have breeding buff and toffee and their differences so just mentioning that while we're here Whereas yellow jacket, I would put in the sort of yellow factor group. We talked about red factor, where red factor actually adds red pigments. Yellow factor seems to actually add yellow pigments. I have raised many yellow jackets from baby to adulthood, and they definitely still have a lot of the same reds, but they have a lot more yellow. I think the main question is, is it different enough from something like buff to say that they're actually different mutations? I don't know. Because the adult yellow jackets do look a lot like the adult buffs, but they're just just quite, just not quite the same. And the last thing I want to go over with all of this is how would we ever tell the difference? How will we ever know if any of these things are actually different mutations? Because they're all dominant and they're all a bit more yellow. And so how do we know? They all originated in caramel lines as well. In the past, there have been some breeding trials done between buff and toffee at least, but ultimately there's no conclusions yet, at least not that I can find in my research. What we would need to do to know for sure is get a homozygous form of all of these. So let's say we had a, a female homozygous yellow jacket, a female homozygous buff, and a male homozygous toffee. If we bred that male to both of the females and then held back their offspring and bred them back together, um, then we would know for sure what we have as far as toffee versus these two other ones go. And then we'd have to do the same breeding trial for the other two mutations as well. Because if you breed a homozygous toffee to a homozygous buff and they are the same mutation, all of the babies will be homozygous for whatever that is. And then if you breed that to a normal, and all of the babies kind of look like the heterozygous version, then it's the same. But if you get any like obvious normals out of the clutch, they're not going to be the same mutation. And it would be the same thing with yellow jacket or yellow factor. Um, I kind of interchange yellow jacket and yellow factor, but I'm not gonna get into that. I hope you found that informative. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Remember like, subscribe, share, all the fun stuff.